Jesus talked, and I want to share three things with you today. And the first is that true honor amazes God. True honor amazes Him. True honor, it amazes God. Luke 7, 1 through 10, when Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, He went to Capernaum. There a certain, there a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with him. Well, Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent, sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. <laughs> he said, for I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. So, so in, in, in Matthew's gospel, it talks about the man actually went to Jesus, but the man didn't go to Jesus. He sent people to Jesus, but he had that type of authority to where whether he went to Jesus or whether he sent people to Jesus, when he sent them to Jesus, it was as if he went himself. So he sent men and he sent Jews to Jesus to talk to Jesus and say, my servant is sick. Now see, Jesus was amazed at his faith because this was a, a Roman official. He was a Roman official who was considered a Gentile. But he understood authority, he understood leadership, he understood his ranking. He was under authority because he reported to those that were above him. But he was also in authority. He said, I'm under authority, somebody's my supervisor, but I'm a supervisor. He had 100 men, 100 soldiers who supported to him. A centurion was a career military officer in the Roman army with control over 100 soldiers. Roman soldiers were hated by the Jews for their oppression, control, and ridicule. So he was taking a risk when he asked the Jewish man to come into his house, when he asked the Jewish man to heal him. Yet his faith amazed Jesus. His faith put to shame some of the stagnant piety of many of the Jewish religious leaders. Like, man, y'all got Jesus and y'all won't even, I mean, what, what are you going to do with him? This man said, look, I know that y'all don't deal with us and I know that we don't deal with y'all. I know that I'm in authority he said, but look, I'm, I'm, I'm under authority, but I'm also in authority. I tell my servant to do this, and he does that. I tell him to come and, and go, and he come and go. Jesus, so I understand authority, and I understand that you're under your father's authority, but you're also in authority. So matter of fact, you don't even have to come to my house. You don't even have to come to where I am. Don't even come under my roof. I'm not worthy to have you even to come under my roof. Just speak the word. Just speak the word, and my servant going to be healed. So you believe enough about me? You don't even know me. You hadn't even spent time. You just heard about what I've done, and you believe that if I just speak the word, then your servant will be healed? I don't even have to show up? Jesus, I hadn't seen anything like this. I hadn't seen this type of faith in all of Israel. And Israel, my own people. But I hadn't seen this type of faith in all of Israel. The Bible says that it amazed Jesus. His faith made him humble. To trust Jesus alone to cross all these type of barriers. Listen, it, it's, it's, the Greek word is thumazo, which is translated marveled or amazed to describe Jesus' response to the centurion's faith. Jesus said, I'm amazed at this faith. I want to do things that amaze Jesus, David. I, I want to do things that, that amaze him. See, these are the type of scriptures that I really studied and I really go back and say, what is it, God, that, that was so amazing about this man's faith that where you said it amazed? You did a lot of things. There's a lot of people have faith. The one with the issue of blood, but you didn't say she amazed you. It amazed you? 
He understood leadership. He understood authority. He understood, look, you know what? Did you, I, I don't even, I'm, I'm, I'm humbling myself. I'm not even worthy enough to have you come. Stop him where he is. Don't even come to my house. You in authority just like I'm in authority. You under authority just like I'm under authority. Just speak the word. When I speak the word, folks move. So I know you can speak the word and you can get some things to move. You don't even have to be there. Speak the word. He understood authority. He understood. Some people want to be the CEO. And some people want to be, you know, you, you just, I want to be the boss. But you don't want to submit to anybody in anything. You just want to be the top dog. And understand that the top dog wasn't always the top dog. That the CEO wasn't always the CEO. And he has some instances, but, but a, good, a good follower will become a good leader. So you're not going to be a good leader if you're not a good follower. David was a good follower. So before he could become a, a, an effective and a good leader, he was a, a, an effective and a good follower. He followed Saul, even when the leadership of Saul wasn't good. David followed him. David paid attention to what to do, and he paid attention also what not to do. So I got to be able to be under somebody before I can be over somebody. Because if I'm effective under somebody, then God will see that, and God will see my faithfulness, and he'll have no problem putting me over someone. I was, um, my, my daughter played softball, which a couple of y'all may know that. And I was at a softball game, and, and the umpire was at the game, and I'm behind, you know, behind the fence. And so whenever the umpire, whenever a pitcher on Madison's team would pitch the ball, and I'm behind, you know, the plate, I would sort of, you know, yell loud like, strike, because I'm trying to get the umpire to call a strike. And not really just trying to give him to call the strike. Now, if, if it worked, it worked. If it don't, but I felt like it was really a strike. If it was close, I want him to hear my voice and say, okay, well, maybe I need to call the strike. So I'm like, hi. And so every time it was like, strike, I'm like, yes, yes. So obviously he got fed up with it. And he was like, okay, this man behind me, he's, he's too, he's too, he, he, he making a lot of noise. And, and he was like, stop, no, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. So I felt like some of y'all just like, okay, because y'all want to know, what, what, so what did you do? Because he, I mean, he, we had a game. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> hold on, player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, listen, I mean, call, call your game. That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, call your game. I ain't tell you to call the strike. I'm just saying what I see. I see a strike. Now call your game. Now if you're not strong enough to hear another voice, I mean, I'm in the crowd. That means how you gonna tell somebody not to cheer? Not to, oh, God, make it, woo, yeah. How you gonna do? You can't do that. You're just the umpire. I'm just hollering strike. And, 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 and man, look, oh, wait a minute. I'm the pastor of Innovation Church Memphis. You and you, you, you know who you're talking to. I got some staff. Well, we got some people. We got some good. Then, it's some people at the game that go to innovation. And you talking to me like that. Man, these folks will get you. These folks don't play about me. They'll get you. Don't want you. Ever. So he. So that's all what I'm thinking. I'm thinking real quick. It's like about, about three seconds. So I got to make a decision. But all this going past, man, I'm, I'm going to pass it in. <laughs> I'm a man, all of it, man. Y'all, what would you think? I'm, I'm a lot of going past. He's an older white man, and I'm like, man, did you, did you try me? Did you? Like going, did, if somebody else would have said that that didn't look like me, would you still? You think I'm a boy? I mean, I mean, I'm just a lot going on in my head. Very quick, and I gotta make a move because if how how I respond, they're gonna think I'm weak if I don't get up with them. They're gonna think I'm trying to see how past an hour going. So I need to I need to shut it down right now. Excuse me, sir, and just speak to this man. Very intelligent, but very you know uh, assertive, and let them know that this is not that. Okay, and that's what I want to do. So I'm thinking really quick because I'm like, my God, what, how do I handle this situation? I'm thinking about everything. My daughter's on this team. We at a school. We, they right here. I feel disrespected. I feel, my God. So I didn't say anything. Amen. 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 My flesh is on the inside. Like, 
Because I'm because they looking, they looking at my response. Because if I said something, they ready to say, they just don't oh, know what he gonna say. I mean, I'm ready to hey, think he is. It's like your kids see you get punked out. You know what I'm saying? Like how you you Daddy gonna let them talk to you like that? That's how Pastor, Pastor you gonna let them talk to you like this is what I'm thinking. So so I don't say anything. Now, now, God blessed and God intervened because when the ending had changed, he asked me to come down there because I was thinking the same thing. Like, I'm going to have a conversation with this man because, man, I, just because you got influenced and you couldn't handle the pressure, you can't tell me I can't say anything in the game. I just don't get it. I'm trying to figure out biblically, how do I handle this dude? Because I don't want to deal with things biblically. I know y'all saved and been saved all your life and every situation that happened in your life, you handled it biblically. You don't even, you know, you don't even think twice about it. But me, sometimes I struggle a little bit. We're trying to figure out how do I handle this, Shanae? What do, how do I, I handle this? So he called me down. I came down to the fence. And he, you know, God bless. He had a really good spirit, really good attitude. He said, man, man, listen, I asked you to stop because when you do that, you know, well, he said, for one, you're, man, you're doing a good job. Man, listen, you're doing a better job than me. He said, but, but when you do that and, and, and you yell it and then I call the strike right behind you, then the other team is going to think that I'm only calling the strike just because you're calling the strike and it just won't look right. So, you know, if you just, and I was like, I hear you, man. I said, I got you. I got you. I get. And we dapped it up. I'm telling you, he's about 60, 70 some years old. We dapped it up and we kept it moving. But the thing is, it was an example for even some of the members that were there to see that you don't have to pop off just because you felt disrespected. I am under authority when I'm there, and I'm wrestling with that. But I was a listen, man, this, this, at this point, this your field. Now, we can, well, technically, it's really not his field, is it? But it's not, chill out and submit and show them submission. Because there's going to be some things that I'm going to ask them to do, and they may feel like, wait a minute. But when they see that I can submit to authority, then they have no problem submitting to my authority. It's going to be too tough for you today. Because you, 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 that, that, you, don't, you, you don't get it. I didn't get it either. And see, when, when, you talk, when we talk about honor, honor is about crossing over. It's about crossing because I don't really get it. And honor is tough. If any of you have really honed into this series, then you've been more conscious about being honoring to your wife, your, your husband, your, your, your children. You've been more con- And it's been a little tough and a little difficult because you've realized that I got to honor those that's not honorable. And it's tough to honor people that's not honorable. But crossover is tough, and it's not going to be easy. But when those things happen, it's, my God, I, I need to, okay, man. And, some, and sometimes, sometimes you got you to, you you you're going to be offended. Sometimes, because, see, you're used to winning. My God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of y'all don't ever lose, you never, you don't never lose a fight. You don't never lose an argument. Whenever somebody pop off, whenever somebody post something, whenever somebody say something or do something that you don't like, you never going to take the short end of the stick, ever. But when we're talking about honoring, sometimes you're going to have to take the short end of the stick and feel like, hey, you got me that time, and it's okay, it's cool. My God, my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got to grit your teeth sometime. I, I know I can whoop him. I know I can roast him. I know I can shut him down. I can shut them down in the hood language, and I can shut them down in the corporate language. I can shut, either way it go, we can get it. We can do it. But let me chill, because I done crossed over, and I need to honor. I, I, I need God, I, and I honor God, and I love God, and I, and I want to honor God in all that I do. It was, um, I had just gotten saved to real, and when I got saved, I wasn't a member of this church, but I was, I was going like all the time. And so I just didn't walk down. I was pretty much a member. So it was a guy who used to come oftentimes and he, he you know, God has given him a gift of prophecy. And he, he would prophesy and, and God would just use him. He would come and, and I would love to hear him. But see, when I first got saved, I didn't like any kind of music. I didn't like, I didn't like gospel music at all. I stopped listening to secular music. I wasn't listening to gospel rap music. I just, was, I just wanted the word. I mean, that's all I wanted. I just wanted to listen to preaching and teaching all the time. I was so hungry for God's word, and, and I, that's all I wanted. You know, so I would come to church. I mean, like if the word of God going forth at 11.50, but church started at 11 o'clock, I'm coming at 
or 1151. I just want to, when you read the scripture, and I, I, that's, that's what I want right there. I don't want to see y'all shout. I don't want to see, I give. I, I'm, I'm a giver, but I don't want to, I just want the word, and I, and I can go. I ain't, we ain't got a fellowship when it's over with. Just give me the word. So that, that's, that, that's where I was. And so this guy saw it, and, and, and he began to speak to me. God used him to, to speak to me. He said, he didn't call me down. He said, stop dragging your feet. He said, stop dragging your feet. Pretty much, you just come in here pretty much whenever you want to, but stop dragging your feet because, see, one day, you're going to be in leadership. In the same way that you respond, people are going to respond to you, and you're going to expect people to be here on time. And in other words, you're better than that. So be here on time and respond how you need to respond, and don't just come at the time that you come. And God blessed because I wasn't in a leadership role at that time. And I began to change how I did business, change how I come to church, and change that because I knew that that was from God. And even though I ain't like the music, I ain't like this, it didn't matter. I needed because, see, one day you're going to be in a position. And, and if you're not being honorable now, don't expect people to honor you when you get in. So when somebody asks you to move, then just move. When somebody asks you to park here, then just park there. Show that you can submit to authority as well. Very important. Very important. Number two, we must honor God in our hearts. So it's not just about in our words, Tori. It's not just about honoring Him in what we say, honoring Him in what we do. But we have to honor Him in our hearts and our thoughts. Whew. Luke 5, 17 through 26. One day Jesus was teaching in Pharisees and teachers. Listen, I... I, I We've, we've gone over this scripture several times since we've been in existence. But you're going to see something today that you hadn't seen before. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village in Galilee, of Galilee, and from Judea in Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with, was with Jesus to heal the sick. Let me say that again. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. This is why the Word of God is so powerful, because, you, you, because you're about to see something that you hadn't seen. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. Y'all hear it? You know where I'm going. When, when, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, that's what we really talked about and we preached from that, the faith of the man or the faith of his friends and how persistent they were and how we need some roof-digging friends and how we need some friends that's going to have enough faith to believe God on our behalf. And so we talked about that and we ministered about that. But, but look at what happened. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Listen to this. This, this. this is what you did. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy, who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Oh, my God. Oh, my. Not Jesus. He didn't say that Jesus saw what they were doing. It didn't say that Jesus heard what they were saying. Yeah, yeah. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Yeah. So they were being dishonoring in their hearts. They were being dishonoring in their mind. And Jesus saw that and he addressed that. He, I see what you're thinking. Jesus. He knew what they were thinking. Why are you thinking these things your heart? Which is easier to say? Let me just go on and deal with it. Your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So... He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. Immediately stood in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Amen. See, Shalom, what, what happened, we really, when we read this, we think about, you know, Jesus just talking to some people, and he was talking to some people, and then four men brought their friends up, and they couldn't get in. They went to the roof, and they cut a hole in the roof, and they sent the man down, and that's awesome. 
But look at what the Word of God says. It says, when Jesus was teaching, he said he was teaching Pharisees, teachers and Pharisees. He said one day, in, in, in verse 17, one day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. So he wasn't just teaching common people. He was teaching Pharisees and teachers of the law. He was teaching scribes. He was teaching people who knew the word of God. He was teaching leaders. He was teaching preachers. People, preachers, he, that, those are the people that he was teaching. So it wasn't just the hood. It wasn't just the church. These were, these were people who had been trained, and he was teaching them. But look at what the word of God says. It says that, and the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. So the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. But at the end of the day, only one person got healed. None of the preachers, none of the teachers, none of the Pharisees got healed. Only one person got healed. But the Spirit of God was there to do it, but nobody got healed. It was something about them dishonoring him that prohibited them from getting what they needed from God. They dishonored him in their thinking, in their hearts. Man, who do you think he is? What's up with this dude? How he just going to say that? How is all of this available? How is all of this, how is God, the healing is available, the breakthrough is available, the deliverance is available, the blessings are available, but I'm not going to get what God has for me because I'm dishonoring him in my thinking, because I'm dishonoring him in my heart. Only one person got healed that day. My God, my God. One person. What are you thinking about? What's in your heart? What's in your heart? We got to elevate our minds for real. We got to get ourselves together because we come here Sunday after Sunday and, and, and healing is available. Sunday after Sunday, deliverance is available. Sunday after Sunday, breakthrough is available. The strength of the Lord is in this place and we don't get what we need. We don't get what we need from God and God is ready to do it. Our hearts got to be open and say, God, however you do it, God, God, I'll be satisfied. Whenever you do it, wherever, God, I'm ready for you, God, to speak into my life, God. Do it for your glory. I got a call yesterday that said that Chastity's mom, she works on staff with us. Chastity's mom had been unresponsive. So she had been unresponsive. She failed. She was found in the yard unresponsive. And her mom has a lot of, a lot of health issues. So when we got that call, and to have the type of health issues that she has, and to say that she's found in the yard, not landing, found in the yard unresponsive, instantly, my mind goes to my God. Instantly, my mind thinks to what we got Saturday. What we got to counsel Saturday. Instantly, I'm like, my God. Whew. My God, what? Jesus. So as I talked to her, the temptation was, because she hadn't heard anything yet. She was going into the hospital. The temptation was, don't ask God to heal her mama because she probably already did. So if you ask God to heal her mama and God don't heal her mama, then it may hurt her belief system pertaining God. So at least you never prayed that prayer. I know I'm being a little too real for y'all. Y'all, y'all don't know. Sometimes I struggle a little bit. I, I struggle, and sometimes I don't have faith initially when, when things hit. I don't just I don't have all the right answers all the time, and I don't have all the right thoughts all the time. And there was the temptation of like, my God, what do I do? Because I'm concerned about my God and with what she with the information that I just received. My God, bow your head with me, Chastity. God, you do it. God, you heal. God, you go before right now, God. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what happened. You go before them doctors, God. God, don't let this woman be dead, God. If she's dead, bring her back to life, God. Do it for your glory, God. We, we, we ain't, we, we ain't, we ain't, look, God, do what you're going to do. It's not going to stop me from praying when I'm going to pray. Well, just let you, because I'm afraid to, no, even in my unbelief, God, help me in my unbelief, God, so that I can believe you, God. I need to trust you about this. There's going to be some times in your life that you're going to 
feel that feeling and feel. I don't know since me even praying. You got to believe, God. God, make this sun stand still, God. God, do something, God. Do the impossible, God. Do the unthinkable, God. I know they say it cancer, God. But when I go back, God, just don't let it be cancer. Just do it. Just, I don't know. Just do it. Just let it be gone, God. Well, you know nobody has ever been delivered from this. Well, you know that nobody ever can come back. I don't care what nobody ever knows. I ain't never been here. He ain't never been here. She ain't never been here. God, you do it. You ain't never seen my God work like this. God, do it for your glory, God. So, God, I honor you, and I believe that you can do, God, anything. I, I believe you can do it, God. I, I believe, God. I believe, God. Just speak the word, God. God, you speak the word, God. You do it, God. I just believe that you can do it. I want to honor you. So I refuse. I refuse to be here Sunday after Sunday. I refuse to be in his word and not trust him and not believe him and not get everything that he has for me. Man, this, he got, if all of this is, is accessible to me, the teachers, the Pharisees had all of Jesus accessible but didn't get anything. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm not going to be up in here week after week. I'm not going to give my life to them and not see God move in a mighty way. I'm pulling on them, man. I'm pulling. I'm being worse. I'm being, I know I asked you this last week, but I'm asking you this this week. I know I asked you about my daughter. Now I'm asking you about my son. I know I asked you about my brother. Now I'm asking you about my cousin. I know I asked you about my sister. Now I'm asking you about my foot. I know I asked you about my foot. Now I'm asking you about the financial breakthrough. God, I want you. I need you. I desire you, God. And whatever, do it, God. He ain't got no problem with that. He ain't got no problem. Keep on asking me. I just want you in my face. I just want you talking to me. Keep on asking me. You, you, you ain't intimidating me by your request. You, this, I'm God, man. The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. What you think this is? Yeah, you know, no, no, no. God, we trust in God. Turn that thing around. A couple of minutes later, got a text. She fine. She just fell. Blah, 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 blah. Look at God. Look at God. God, we bless your holy name, God. God, we give you glory. We give you honor, God, because we know what the devil, God, would have meant, God. Hallelujah, God. We lift up our hands and say glory, God. We know, God, what we was thinking, but the devil is a lie, God, because even in our unbelief, God, we trusted you anyway, God. Hallelujah. 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 So it's when those thoughts come, you get casted down because they're going to come. Doubt going to come. Disbelief going to come. The thoughts of quitting is going to come. They're going to come. I know you did it for them, but can you really do it for me? This may be the depths of Devil, you are a lie. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care. I don't care. God, you can bring this marriage back together, God. God, you can give strength to us, God. God, you can deliver, God. God, you can bring these dead bones, these dry bones, God, back to life. I just believe that you can do it, God. Don't tell me what ain't never happened. Don't tell me what ain't never happened. Don't tell me what you ain't never seen. Jesus said to the man, his faith was amazing. I want to amaze you, God. I hope that God looked at me yesterday, Dodge, and said, that's amazing, son, because I know what the devil planted into you. I know what the devil spoke into you. With what, her, with what she got going on and this, you get this call, it was, I, and you still asked me to do it anyway. See, the temptation was, I'm just going to get up. I'm not saying, <laughs> the temptation was this. Well, I'm going to pray for her, but I ain't going to pray publicly for her, just in case God don't do it. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't going to do it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So just in case he don't do it, it's, I didn't really, uh, I'm just going to get off the phone. Okay, I'm, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Uh-uh, uh-uh. See, we get now that. That's cowardly. Pray for it right now. And ask for it right now. And expect God to do it right now. And expect these dry bones to, to come back to life right now. Expect the resurrection to take place right now. God, we standing on your word. And if you don't do it, God, you just don't do it, God. I still trust you. My God, my God, my God, my God. That's just being a little real. That's just being a little, because it's going to be some times in your life, man, 
It's going to be some times in your life, woman, you're going to, it's that struggle, but it's like, no, you know what, I got to trust you anyway, God. I got to believe you anyway, God. Against all hope, I got to believe you. Abraham, against, against what it looked like, I got to believe you. I know what it looked like. I know what I'm looking at. God, I know God. I know you, God. And I know you can do the impossible, God. Are you specializing in doing what men think is impossible, God? That's your specialty, God. So God, do it. And got the t- and I'm like, look at God. I, I would have been ashamed had I not prayed out loud for her. I would have been ashamed had I not asked God to heal her mama. I would have been ashamed. Man of God, preacher of the gospel, pastor, I, ashamed. Just, I don't know how this going to look. I don't, I don't just, I don't want, no, no, we, God, we trust in you. Say, my rep, this your rep, God. I believe you. I don't do this anyway. You do it anyway, God. You do it, God. Bless the name of Jesus. Number three, hallelujah. True honor never breeds familiarity. True honor never breeds familiarity. Familiar is well known from long or close association. Familiar, like a close friendship, intimate, informal. Casual, relaxed, easy, comfortable. Sometimes we get too relaxed, informal, easy, casual, and comfortable with God. And we just, just familiar, just, he's just our dog. He's just our homie. Now he ain't just our dog, he ain't just our home, he our Lord, he our Savior, he's our King, he's the King of kings, he's the Lord of lords. I don't care who, who try to reduce him to just your homie, he's our Lord of lords. Mark 6, 1 through 6, Jesus addressed this. He said, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They were what? Amazed. Where did this man get these things? My God. This guy is awesome. They asked, what's this wisdom that has been given, to, that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Now, verse 3, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Man, this, this dude, I know, we, I know, man, he got it going on, man. He, but wait a minute. This just the carpenter. Wait a minute. This, this, just, this just Joseph's boy. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Man, we, we, we hang with his sisters. So how he, how he the Messiah? Forget about what he's doing. Forget about the miracles. Forget about him raising the dead. It's, we, we, they became too common with him. In other words, they've been in church too long. They've seen the game too long. <laughs> they saw people worshiping but still sleeping with folks that they weren't married to. So they, they, they stopped believing in the power of God. Because they say if he can do it and the anointing of God is still on his life, then for sure I can do it. I want you to understand something, people of God. I want you to understand something and understand that you can be anointed, you can preach and be anointed, you can sing and be anointed, but the Word of God said that there are gifts without repentance. So just because you are anointed don't mean that, that you are right with God. God wants you to be right with Him. You are anointed, you can preach, you can teach, you can pray and get a breakthrough. God is blessing you, you with overflow. He's blessing you abundantly, but this does not mean that you are right with God. You have a gift, but God said, I'd rather have your repentance and my God, I want your repentance, I want your heart. The gift comes without repentance. In other words, you can still live a mess, but his anointing will be on your life. But don't let that trick you and deceive you to think that you're in right standings with God. One, two, three, four. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I can't get that twisted. I can't get that twisted. Oh, I got a job. 
I can't get that twisted. Oh, I got the breakthrough. Oh, hey, see, see, everybody been praying for this, but I got it, so God is with me. God said, yeah, that's the thing I want, though. It's the one thing. It's that man that I'm, I, need, I need that up off you. It's that woman. I, I need that up off you. It's that porn. I need that up off you. It's that attitude. I need that up off you. It's the disobedience. I need that up off you. Yeah, you got the gift. You got the job, but don't get it twisted, ma'am. Don't get it twisted, sir. I need that up off you. It's more than I desire of you. It's more than I desire of you. So even if you don't come back here, and if you go somewhere where they water down the gospel, God still needs to get that up off you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Because sometimes, what, what, what sometime what some of us will do, you will love the church, you will love God. Oh, God is doing some awesome things at Innovation Church, and you will love it. But when God come down your street, when he start knocking at your door, when he get in your house and get in your room, and there's some things in your life that you refuse to let go of, like that woman, like that man, like that sin that you refuse to let go of, then you'll make up an excuse why you don't come back. And just because you don't come back don't mean that God ain't coming to you and coming to your house. God still going to come where you are, come down your street, because he want to deal with your stuff. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You think you can just run away from, uh, I can go somewhere. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands. That's all you going, that's all you about. You like that church. And you know God got you here giving you this work. You know God got you here. Well, oh, he done knocked on your door and you feel like this is a stronghold and I can't let this go. And I refuse to be here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and being convicted and convicted and convicted. Well, stop being convicted and just do right and say, God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. You got me, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. <laughs> this is the piece right here. Wayne said he could not do any miracles there. We talking about God. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. The Bible said he was amazed at their lack of faith. See, see I, don't want, I want God being amazed at me, but I want him being amazed at my faith. Not amazed at my lack of faith. Like he was amazed like, are you for real? You, you ain't going to pray for that girl for real? You ain't going to believe me for real? Out of everything you just saw me do. Out of all them dead situations that you didn't see me bring back to life. You mean to tell me that you, you ain't going to believe me for real? I don't want him to say, I'm amazed at your lack of faith. And, 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 and you keeping a cap and you keeping a limit on what I can do for you because of your lack of faith. I can't even do what you really need me to do for you because you, you won't believe me. Y'all, I, I, didn't, I didn't make this up. I know y'all think I made it up because the screen's not working. And y'all think I inserted my stuff in here. I didn't do it. Oh, my God. So, so now, now I'm about to bless you real quick, and we're going to come back. So, so I just want to talk a little bit about marriage, all right? So you, you, this is a free one for you, all right? A little bit about marriage. It's very important about marriage because sometimes we become so familiar in our relationships with our spouses. We become familiar. And, and, and the love that you had, the desire that you had, the spark that you had, the things that you used to do, you don't do them anymore. Because you become so familiar. It's, it's, I don't have to give her roses now. We've been married for four years. I don't have to tell him I love him now. He should know I love him by, by what I do for him. I don't have to come home. I mean, you just become too familiar. And, and, and just reading an article and talking about some of the top reasons for divorce. And one was infidelity. The infidelity often begins as seamlessly innocent friendship. It starts as an emotional affair, which later becomes a physical affair. So in other words, it's, it's just emotional first. He can be unattractive, but you talk to him long enough, that joke, he all right with you. Because he's scratching your itch. Because he's giving you what, you what you want. He's saying what you want to hear. He around long enough, he paid enough bills, he picked up the kids a little bit. You're like, I can go and get, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it, 
Listen, having an affair is a sign of problems in a relationship, not necessarily the cause of those problems. So sometimes an affair is a sign that, that there's a deeper problem. Now, some people just, you just, they just going to cheat. I ain't talking about them. They, you just going to do it. It don't matter if you, everything perfect. You just, that's who you are. He said, for instance, if a couple may be, a couple may be involved sexually regularly, but if one partner feels ignored, they may look for a connection with someone else. Perhaps the intimacy in their relationship or the sex in their relationship is fine, but the relationship is boring and overly predictable. In this case, a husband or wife may have an affair for the rush of danger and excitement it brings. Another cause is lack of intimacy. Not feeling connected to your partner. It can quickly ruin marriage because it leaves couples feeling as though they're living with a stranger or more likely roommates than spouses. This can be from a lack of physical or emotional intimacy and isn't always about sex. If you're constantly giving your spouse the cold shoulder, then know that over time, a divorce can occur. Making your relationship intimate and special is the responsibility of both partners. Practice little acts of kindness, appreciation, and enjoy physical intimacy as much as possible to sweeten your relationship. So intimacy will become too common. So you come home, ain't no kiss when you come home. You leave, ain't no kiss before you leave. We, we used to say things to each other, now we don't say, we can just go to sleep. It's, it's, it's no, we don't, we don't make time, we don't date each other. We don't, we don't, we don't send little texts through the day. We don't take duck little pictures and pose. We don't, we just, we stop. We used to do that, but now we don't do it because we're too busy and, and the kids got me, we just, we just moving and, and it's like we roommates. I became too common because, see, before I wouldn't do that because, see, with the, with the chick you're cheating with, you, you put forth an effort. But now with your wife, you don't put forth the same effort that you put forth with the. And the last one with that is a lack of support. When it comes to divorce, however, it's often cited reasons. It's seemingly counterintuitive. Many spouses want out of marriage because they feel their partner has not been happy and celebratory enough during their moments of triumph. This is important. Wow. Du during their moments of triumph, the spouse says that my, my partner hadn't been as celebratory as I would like them to be. Yeah. Supporting your partner when they've been promoted at their job or are experiencing some other personal triumph is absolutely pivotal to a long and healthy marriage. The inability of your partner to be happy for another is, far greater, is a far greater cause of divorce than you would think. Listen, if you are, listen this, is, this is important. If you are experiencing a moment of joy and success and your spouse is not the first person you call or the one you most want to celebrate with, then your marriage is in trouble. My God. My God. You get a promotion and you think about your partner. I want to share with, with, with my homie. You start the business and things going. You got your first client and I, I, you, you don't, you're not thinking about your, 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 your spouse problem. Because one, it may be that, you know, he don't support me anyway. She don't support me anyway. He don't celebrate me anyway. He don't encourage me anyway. And so it's a, it's a, it's a lack of support because we, be, we, we became too common with each other. It's not, it, it's, we became too familiar. It, it's, it's not anything. I tell him about my day and I tell him, oh, it's awesome. Let me tell you what happened. And then I end up, you know, they, they gave me 50 extra dollars. Oh, okay, man, that's cool. That's what's up. Hey, look, what, what, we, what we got for dinner? And you wonder why he talking to. <laughs> or she talking to Bobby. Because Bobby celebrate her. And you don't celebrate her. Bobby concerned about her, and you're not concerned about her. Bobby support her, and you don't support her. Because you became too, too, too calm, and you, you become too familiar. You, you don't, you know, it's, it's important. See, everybody else can celebrate me, but if she not celebrate me, then that's, that, that's when it's a problem. Everybody else can say I did a great job, but I'm like MJ. MJ say this to, he said this to us. Mama, you so proud of me? Daddy, you so proud of me? Dad, I did this. You so proud of me, Daddy? I made the shot, Daddy. You so proud of me? And that's how I feel with my wife. 
I did something for the, uh, I, I forgot what it was. And I said, baby, you so proud of me? I just did it. I said, you so proud of me, baby? But we laughing, but I want her to be so proud of me. I want her to be, oh, my God, boy, you just know, boy, when you do this and when you do that, when you, oh, my God. And she does it, too. She give it to me, too. Now, li- listen to this. It's this woman who, <laughs> she became too common with the man of God, with her husband. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20 through 23. When David returned home to bless his household because he had just received the Ark of the Covenant back. And so that meant the glory of the God had come back to Israel. So when David returned home and they got the, the Ark, they got the blessings of the Lord. When he turned home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, didn't even call her David's wife said, Michael, daughter of Saul, came to meet him and said, this is wife, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls and his servants as any vulgar fella would. You're supposed to be the man. You're the CEO of the nation, boy. You're supposed to be the pastor. You're the bishop. You own the company. How is it that you're going to go around and, and, and look like you was looking when you was praising God? How was I looking like you was looking? <laughs> you was looking just like you was looking and, and, and looking all like that, lifting up your hands and crying and dancing like you was dancing. What kind of man are you? What kind of, you, you going to church, you, what, what, what kind of person, are, who does that? I need you to be macho, and I need you to be a man. I need you to just sit there and just nod your head and just grunt. I don't need you to look like this. She's talking to her man. She's talking to her husband. David said to Michael, it was before the Lord. I I don't, Devin, I don't do this, you know, for for, for the people. I do this for the Lord. I was was rejoicing because the glory of God. So you, you you don't appreciate, you don't appreciate what I bring to this marriage. You don't appreciate what I bring to this home. I ain't bring no crack in the house. I brought the Ark of the Covenant back to the nation. Man, I'm a man of God. I ain't bring you no disease back here. I brought the Ark, I brought the glory of the Lord back here. And you can't appreciate that? Man, I work hard and you can't appreciate that? I take care of the kids and you can't appreciate I just need you to appreciate me. I ain't out here like all the other cats. You ain't on Facebook going off on me. I take care of my kids in this house. I take care of my kids in that house. I do what I have to do because I'm a man and, and I love you and I love the kids. But you, you, that's how you're you going to talk to me? You don't see anything good in me? You always popping off? Because I didn't, I didn't pick up the kids on time. Oh, I'm sorry. I, ain't, I didn't do this. I ain't pay this bill. I'm sorry. But that's, that's how you're going to talk to me. See, Sharon don't talk to me like that. And, and see, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be with Sharon, but Sharon know how to talk to me. And Sharon know how to stroke my ego. And Sharon is always like, oh, my God, I know your wife, when she see you, she just melt because, my God, you are a man. You are a man's man. And I wish my man was like you. And you do this and you do that and you're a leader. And my man doesn't do anything here. Oh, my God. I wish, Oh, if, if I know you just blesses her life. That's what she tell me. But when I come home, you... You, that, uh, get out, don't touch me. <laughs> and over time, I may not be the best man, but I, I'm all right. Oh, y'all got quiet. Brothers, you ain't got to say nothing, just chill. Just like, hey, come on, come on. <laughs> It can go both ways, now. It go both ways, but but it's it's I'm I'm all right. I'm decent. I ain't I'm not a hot. I may be a mess, but I ain't no hot mess. I bring my money home. I mean, I, David said to Michael, it, it, "It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house." When he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel, he got fed up with it. He said, let, 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 let me come, let me, come, 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 let, let, let me holler at you for a minute. Let me tell you something. Let me give you this work real quick. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. Yeah, so you thought that was something, you wait till tomorrow. 
You thought I was sweating this Sunday, wait the next Sunday. I'm going to be all over the stage, jumping, doing backward flips. You thought there was something. You wait till you see this. God, the glory of God that came back in here, and that's what you got to say? That's all you see? We done had this kind of week, the bills paid, everything, and all you able to do is point out what I didn't do. Okay, okay, all right. I wonder what you're going to say when I don't come home. What's you going to say then? So what, come on, what, 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 it's all right, don't, don't worry about it. See, so you look through my phone and you don't find nothing in my phone. You got the code. But that, what, what, okay, all right, all right. Now I'm going to lock that John up, see, because how I used to be. See, it ain't like that no more, but how I used to, that's how I used to be. But, now, but you ain't got nothing good to say. I tell you what, look, wait, wait, wait till next week. He said, look, and, and I would be humiliated, humiliated in my own eyes. He said this, but these slave girls you spoke of, I would be held in honor. But Slim them at the job, they gonna like that. They fooling with me. But when I go over there, they, they celebrate. They say Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. They mess with me. These slave girls you was talking about, they thought it was cute what I was doing. They was like, I'm awesome. But you got a problem with it. My God, my God. And Micah, daughter of Saul, listen. And Micah, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. She got too familiar with him. See, when they first got married, she married the king. He's the man. So now, he a boy. So what, what happened? So I, I made a couple of mistakes, so now, now I'm a boy. You didn't get to for me. So who, who are you to talk like this to your husband? Who are you to speak like this to your husband? Look at what you said to your husband. Look at how you talking to your husband. Let me, let me rewind. Look at how you talking to anybody, number one. Number two, look at how you talking to a man. Number three, look at how you talking to your man. Number four, look at how you talking to your husband. Number five, look at how you're talking to the king. Number six, look at how you're talking to the Lord's anointing. The Lord has anointed me as king, and this is, you're going to dishonor me? You, 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 you get, I don't know. I don't know if it was when I cried. I don't know if it was when you saw that I was human. I don't know if it was when I made a mistake. I don't know what happened along the way that you got too close and too familiar with me, that you don't respect me and that you don't honor me. I, I, don't, I don't know what has happened. You got to honor him. You got to honor her. Don't allow things to become too familiar and, and people to become too familiar in, in, in relationships with you. People and, and, and your coworkers become too familiar. So I thank God for my wife because she respects me as her man. She respects me as her husband. See, see, at the house, at the house, yeah, I'm, I'm not Pastor Myron at the house, but she still respects me as her husband at the house. But she not only respects me as her husband at the house, she also respects me as her pastor as well and her leader at the house as well. So that's what's important. So it's not just that you my husband, you my leader, you my pastor. You understand what I'm saying? So, so she honors me at that level. In all, in all, whatever relationship I have with her, she honors me. And that's important. Because somebody, you, you, ain't, you ain't, look, you just, you just, you just little married here then. You just, yeah, yeah. No, you, 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 you still my man. And I still respect you, and I still honor you. Let's honor one another and not become so familiar. Listen, familiar with God, familiarity with God causes us to lose the respect and fear for the Lord and for his chosen leaders. Familiarity with God causes us to lose respect and honor both to God and his house. Familiarity with God causes believers to think that God is with them when he has left them. Familiarity with God prevents the Holy Spirit from working effectively both in the church and in the lives of Christians. When we become familiar with him, oftentimes we become so familiar with him because we, we get saved and, and, and we on fire for him. 
We get saved and, 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 and we loving them and we and we, we 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 seeking them and he's moving in our lives. And then something happened. He don't do something or or time time flies by and 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 it just goes and you 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 don't have the same vigor, the same desire, the same passion that you once had for him. You get the job and now you got the job and, and it's not the same anymore. Somebody gets sick and, and, and you 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 pull in, you lean in, you get sick and you lean in, you hear more, you're present more. But then something happened and you just, you know, you, you straight now. You thought you was, had counsel, you don't have counsel. And you, you was leaning in then, but now you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't leaning in so much now. You needed God to deliver and God delivered and, and you was okay then. But now, now, now he done did it. You, you, out, you wanted to be married, you married now. And, and now you, you're not, it's not the same anymore. God gave you the breakthrough or God didn't give you the breakthrough. And now, but where you were then when you was, was leaning on him and depending on him and loving him, now you're not there anymore. What has happened? I remember when you wouldn't look at anything, you wouldn't listen to anything. If it wasn't gospel, you wouldn't look at anything. If it wasn't glorifying God. But now as, as time has progressed, now you you, 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 you slick listening to what you weren't listening to. You slick talking how you weren't talking. You slick watching what you weren't watching. You're talking to who you weren't talking to because you become so familiar with him instead of having that, uh -uh, that, that fear of God. That fear of God, uh -uh, God, 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 I love you, God. But God, I, it's not that I'm scared of you, God. It's that I respect you so much, God, that if I think I offended somebody, oh, I apologize to you. I apologize to God. If I think that I looked at somebody wrong, if I thought that I was speed, God, I got to slow this thing down because, God, I got to honor you in everything that I do. What has happened to you? Who has be be bewildered you? Who has bamboozled you to make you dishonor God and say, God, we're familiar now. See, things change. I got the whip now. Things change. I got the job now. Things change. I got my healing now. Things change. I got the breakthrough now. Things change. The ministry going forward now. Things change. I got some money now. Things change. We ain't broken no more now. Things change. They didn't lock me up. God, I thank you, God, but I'm familiar with you. See, see, this is what I thank God for, and it's that the same fire that I had over 20 years ago is the same fire that I got today. And it's not just because I just woke up with it, it's because I have to re Y'all don't want to have no church. It's not because I just woke up with it, it's because I have to go and light the fire every morning. Y'all ain't having church with me. I got to go and light it. I got to go and make sure the fire don't go out. I got to go. I got to guard what God has given me. I got to guard this stuff. I got to guard it with my life. I can't allow these conversations to be in my ear. I can't allow my eyes to watch this. I can't allow my ears to hear this. I guard this, God, because I never want to be so familiar with you, God. I remember in 1996, God, when you brought me out, God. I remember in 1997 when you brought me out, God. I remember in 2000 when you brought me out. In 2011 when you brought me out. In 2018 when you brought me out, God. How in the world am I going to become common with you, God? I done seen your track record. I've seen what you can do. I've seen how you can move, God. I'm not going to be common as all you did it back then, God. I believe that you can still do it right now, God. And you can do greater things now, God. Oh, well. Oh, well. You become common. You, you become familiar. You just, oh, well. How is it that you was here and you was praising them and you was on fire and you was running from them and you was on your knees and you wouldn't talk to anybody and you was talking and you was and you was speaking this word and you was posting on Facebook and you and just you just easing your way on out. Listen, you better get this in your spirit that, that backsliding is a process. It's a process. Oftentimes, it don't happen overnight. You don't just, whoo, I slipped off the mountain. It's a process. It's those things that you begin to tolerate that you weren't tolerating before. In 1996, I threw away my Tupac, and I love my Tupac, but I ain't pick up Tupac back. I ain't pick him back up. I ain't pick up nothing else. I ain't pick up nothing. God, I need you, God. I want you to be in my spirit. I, want, I know y'all got real quiet on that because it's some stuff you ain't trying to. God, I need, I want to honor you in what I listen to. I want to honor you in what I watch, God. And if I was doing it 20 years ago, I'm not going to, well, I, you know, I'm stronger now. I can do it. Yes, I'm stronger. I'm strong enough to go into a club or do whatever else I want to do and still be on fire for God. But I'm not going to change that because I love him and I honor him. And I'm not going to become so familiar with him 